Hi all, welcome back to my YouTube channel Med Edophilia. Today we are going to discuss about the second part of the chapter, Neural Control and Coordination, which is Sense Organ. The reason why I picked up this topic is that this is extremely important and you will require a clear understanding. Let us first discuss about the nose. In NCRT, nose is described in just three to four lines and many students tend to mug up these sentences without actually understanding the meaning. So, to understand the meaning of these lines, you need to first know the underlying concepts. I can assure you that if you watch this video without skipping it, you will master this topic definitely. Before actually talking about the nose and its me mechanism of olfaction, let's have a look at the brief account of sense organs in general. So we all know we have five sense organs, the eye for sight or vision, the ear for hearing sound, nose for the sense of smell or olfaction we say, tongue for the sense of taste or gustation and skin for the sense of touch, tactile we say. This scheme which I have displayed here is now the basic for understanding all the mechanisms involved in different sense organs. So the sense organ is a receptor basically which receives the stimuli. So recollect a stimuli is anything in the environment that produces a response in the human body and a receptor is an organ which receives this stimuli. Now this input is passed on to the CNS which is composed of the brain and spinal cord by the sensory nerves. Sensory nerves are also known as the afferent nerves. The spelling is very important here. It is A, afferent. From the CNS, the signal is passed on to the motor organs or the effector which helps in the movement of our body according to the stimuli which is the response it, our body produces and this signal is transmitted by the motor nerves or the efferent nerves. So sensory nerves or the afferent nerves helps in the transmission of signals from the receptor to the CNS while the motor nerves or the efferent E efferent nerves helps in the transmission of signals from the CNS to the effector. So just keep this flowchart in your mind. This will simplify the mechanism of olfaction, gustation, hearing and everything which you will be learning further. Now coming to the nose. So here what is the stimuli? It is the aromatic, any aromatic substance or the odorant which is made up of dissolved chemicals. So this is the stimuli. So now this odorant or the aromatic substance travels through the nasal cavity and this is received by the olfactory receptor. The olfactory receptor is made up of olfactory epithelium and it is mucus coated. These are two important characteristics which we need to know about olfactory receptors which is also given in your NCRT. Now the signals from here are transmitted to the CNS as we saw by the sensory nerves known as the olfactory nerves. Now the signal is transmitted to the olfactory bulb, a new term here. So olfactory bulb are the extension of the brain's limbic system and the brain's limbic system is a part of the CNS. So let us study the two more characteristics of olfactory bulb. Olfactory bulb are small, they are broad bean shaped organs and they are one pair. 
the olfactory epithelium extends from the outside environment into the olfactory bulb. So let me draw. So first we have the receptor receiving the stimuli which is made up of the olfactory epithelium and the signals are received by the sensory nerves which is the olfactory nerves and the sensory nerves transmit the signals to the olfactory bulb which are extensions of the brain's limbic system which is a part of the CNS. So first we started with an aromatic substance entering into our nasal cavity which forms the stimulus and then they reach the receptor made up of the olfactory epithelium olfactory epithelium from there the signals are transmitted by the sensory neurons or the olfactory neurons to the brain's limbic system which is a part of the CNS. So can you recollect what is the limbic system? So the limbic system is made up of the inner parts of the cerebral hemisphere and other structures like the amygdala and hippocampus which controls and regulates your emotions, the motivation, fear, rage and so on. So talking about the olfactory bulb, they are one pair, they are broad but they are small. Okay, Can you notice the contrast? They are broad but they are small. They are broad bean shaped organs and they are small and they are extensions of the brain's limbic system and the olfactory epithelium which is has another name known as the Snyderian membrane extends from the outside environment into the olfactory bulb. Now I'm sure you're able to connect the dots and imagine as a final picture the entire mechanism of olfaction is now over. The last part left is about studying more in detail about the olfactory receptor. So two things we have already learnt is that one it is mucus coated receptors and it is made up of olfactory epithelium. So we know any receptor is composed of neuron. Okay. All factory receptors are nothing but modified bipolar neuron. They are modified bipolar neuron. Now let's talk about the olfactory epithelium in detail. Olfactory epithelium is made up of three kinds of cell. The first important cell is the Bowman's gland which stores, secretes mucus. So Bowman's gland, it is a single cell. It's like something like the goblet cell which we have learned in the first chapter, structural organization in animals. Do you recollect? Goblet cell is a unicellular gland that secretes mucus. So this mucus helps in the protection from the irritants. The second type of cells is the Sartorli cells, sustentacular cells. The name is self-explanatory which tells you that these cells help in the support and maintenance. Where else have you heard of this name, supporting cells? Can you recollect? Yes, they are the Sertoli cells of the testis. The Sertoli cells which help in providing nourishment, which support the male germ cells spermatogonia okay getting back to this the third type of cells is the hair cells so why the name hair because it has cilia in them so whenever we smell a substance the hairs absorb the chemical substance and the chemicals in the air and the olfactory receptors become excited that is the neurons the modified bipolar neuron is excited because of the absorbent absorbing the chemical molecules present in the air by the hair cells and these receptor transmit to the sensory nerves 
so i told you the sensory nerves are also known as the olfactory nerves right so this olfactory nerve is cranial nerve number 1 which is sensory in function so there are about 12 cranial nerves in human beings and the very first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve which is sensory in function so have a look at this picture let us recollect quickly the different types of cell which constitute the olfactory epithelium the vermin's gland which keeps it moist and protect it from irritants by storing mucus second one is supporting cells and the third one is the hair cells so there are the, some special cells can you see which i have marked in red these are basal stem cells which regenerate the neurons you would have learned that neurons are the only cells which do not have the ability to divide and regenerate themselves but here there is an exception it is in this cnidarian membrane there are basal stem cells which regenerate new bipolar neurons so this is all about cnidarian membrane or the olfactory epithelium this olfactory epithelium extends from the outside environment directly into a pair one pair of broad bean shaped small sized organs known as the olfactory bulbs which are extensions of the brain's limbic system so i am repeating this again because these are extremely important lines of ncrt this limbic system helps in connecting the sense of smell to your memory and this is the reason whether you like or dislike a smell because it gets stored in your memory and they are strongly linked with your emotions so now we have come to the end of the mechanism of olfaction sense of smelling so whenever in biology you learn some mechanism in that is in human physiology there is always an associated disorder with it so similarly here there is a disorder called anosmia so whenever you see a new term try to break the term wherever there is an a as a prefix to the term the a means loss or absent or no and osmia means sense of smell so what is anosmia the loss of sense of smell which is also a common symptom of covid-19 right okay so now what is hyposmia hypo is reduced hypo means less or reduced anosmia just i just now i told you just sense of smell so it is hyposmia is the reduced sense of smell just for your information so the next sense organ that we are going to discuss is the tongue tongue has gustatory receptors tongue has taste buds for detecting different kinds of taste like the sweet sour bitter and so on these taste buds are nothing but projections of your papillae now you will learn more about the tongue in the chapter digestive system the sense of gustation and olfaction have similarities in them the main similarity is that both tongue and the nose de- detect dissolved chemicals now what do you mean by dissolved dissolved here mean dis- the chemicals dissolved in your body fluid for example if you take the nose nose senses aromatic substances right this aromatic substance is a dissolved chemical why because this aromatic substance is dissolved in the mucus mucus is a body fluid do you get the meaning now okay now talking about the tongue tongue 
detects the different taste of the food the food substance here is the chemical dissolved chemical right and this is dissolved in the saliva yes and saliva is a body fluid so here when we say dissolved chemicals what is dissolved chemicals are dissolved where in what dissolved in the body fluids next the chemical senses of gustation and olfaction are functionally similar and they are interrelated why because both have chemoreceptors both nose and tongue have chemoreceptors in them and whether whether or no you have observed uh, you can observe this in your daily life especially when you have a blocked nose the same food tastes different compared to when you are normal that is your normal and healthy the food tastes better when you have cold and some sort of infection in your nose and your nose is blocked and the sense of olfaction is a little bit reduced then you can notice this difference very clearly so we say that sense of gustation and olfaction are functionally interrelated so that's the end of today's class so all i wanted you is not to mug up those three to four lines given in ncrt but to clearly understand so that you can answer any type of questions objective questions mcqs coming from any direction so i hope you will now be clear with this concept and comment below your doubts thank you for watching stay tuned for more